The federal government is projected to generate 136.3 billion naira as revenue from electronic money transfers to be paid by bank customers in 2023. Now, this is based on a projected 2.7 billion volume of eligible online transfers in the year. The Budget Office of the Federation, which disclosed this in its 2023 to 2025 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper, released said the recently approved regulations governing the administration of the electronic money transfer levy, EMTL, is expected to boost collections of the revenue. Now, the government said it would also ensure proper monitoring of banks and other financial institutions to conduct reconciliation and to ensure deduction and remittance of the levy. On the show today, we will be looking at revenues from the ETM and its impact on customers. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. First off, the Lagos State Government has launched its whistleblowing initiative to ensure transparency, accountability, stimulating trust and more investment into Lagos State and above all to mitigate fraud. This was the submission of the Commissioner for Finance, Rabiu Olowo, while speaking at the launch of the state whistleblowing initiative in Alausa, Ikeja. Take a look. Whistleblowing Initiative, a statewide project, was introduced to provide a platform for employees, stakeholders, and the general public to report violations, misconduct, or unethical behavior across the state. It is meant to encourage reporting of illegal actions or financial crimes through the appropriate channel with a view to correcting non-compliance. The initiative aimed at building a speak-up culture in the public is being piloted by the Lagos State's Internal Revenue Service, LIRS. The state government's decision to pioneer implementation of the scheme in LIRS is in tandem with the agency's continuous strive and drive to ensure that our responsibility to the state is carried out efficiently and effectively. The LIRS boss explained that the facility does not only provide the avenue to report, but ensures credibility of reports through investigation, feedback, and protection of such whistleblowers. The facility is designed to ensure that concerns about wrongdoing or malpractice within the agency can be raised by any stakeholder without fear of victimization, subsequent discrimination, disadvantage, or dismissal. The Commissioner for Finance and that of Budget and Economic Planning, Rabi Uluwu and Sam Egubi, in their separate speeches, highlighted more on the initiative. Next level is for us to take it down uh, to uh, 20 local government areas and um, the 36 uh, or 37 uh, LCDAs to ensure that there is an end to end, uh, you know activity whereby we promote transparency, accountability uh, for the Lagos residents. So this is something that we're going to do and uh, we, we are very hopeful that um, it will be accepted. This particular launch is another milestone attempt to open up um, the state to accountability, to transparency, to the citizens of Lagos State right, to participate in governance. It's our belief that their improved and increased participation through safe channels like what we are launching today would um, stimulate trust, would stimulate openness, and would stimulate investment from the people of Lagos. The platform is safe for confidentiality, and it is independently managed by DLOT, a globally accredited company. The policy was introduced in December 2016 by the federal government as part of initiatives to wage war against corruption. Here are whistleblowing hotlines to dial should you see something and want to report. Please dial 0800-847-6337. 
From Lagos, Love Ikuku Oyedoko, Plus TV News. Uh, welcome back. The electronic money transfer levy was introduced in the Finance Act 2020, which amended the Stamp Duty Act and taps into the growth in electronic funds transfer in Nigeria. The 50 Naira levy is charged on electronic transfer of money deposited in any bank or financial institution on any account on the sum of 10,000 Naira or more. The revenue derived from the EMT levy is shared based on derivation and distributed at 15% to the federal government and federal capital territory, 50% to the state government and 35% to the 774 local governments. The Public Relations Office of the Association of Mobile Money and Bank Agents in Nigeria, Amban, Oluwa Shego Elegbe Day, joins us now in this discussion. Well, thanks for joining us, Shego, on this particular discussion. Thank you, Justin, for having me. All right, let us talk about this uh, uh, plan of the federal government to generate about 484 billion naira from e-payment channels. You know, specifically, the whole discourse is going towards the EML, the electronic money transfer, EMT rather. What is the situation before now, and uh, how will it actually affect customers going forward? Well, uh, if you look at the report, Justin, uh, you will see that... Uh, uh, it is just projected that there will be increments in what the federal government will generate from EMTL. Uh, this has been in place since 2020. Uh, towards the end of 2019, the policy was introduced uh, by the Night Post uh, because they are the ones in charge of the stamp duty. And at the time, the association kit because it was at the time on all, all amounts. But after we pushed, and uh, we were able to to get to 10,000 Naira single transaction, and then from 10,000 Naira, um, the stability will take effect on the receiver or the fund. And the implication is that uh, the effort that the federal government itself is making in ensuring that we have everyone included in the financial uh, spectrum of the country, uh, it will also be like a policy of sort of, of some sort because uh, if, you, if you put this in, into perspective as also card maintenance and then SMS charges and some other charges that with different nomenclature depending on the, the bank you use, you see that uh, it's, it's something that is uh, of, of worry for us. As, as players in the, in the industry. Okay, but looking at it right now, a whole lot is happening with the e-payment system and uh, it is seemingly at that particular sector doing very, very well. For instance, now from reports that uh, we have seen so far, uh, we had a Nigerian that spending um, on utility bills or spendings on utility bills, you know, have soared by 387%. That means a whole lot of Nigerians are using the e-payment channels and platforms, meaning that um, this particular uh, channel is supposed to derive a whole lot you know, for the federal government. But if you look at it in the entirety, do you really think Nigerians uh, would really be uh, in support of this particular charge as it is? Yeah, it, it, it's like I said earlier, it's adding to the cost of access to financial services. And if you look at the inflation rate as, 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 it, as at now, and having to, to confront this kind of uh, challenges again, I mean, it's like adding to what the, like, what the engineers are already battling with in, in the economy as it is today. So it's to us, it is not a welcome development, more so that the, the funds being generated from this process uh, are not being translated into physical amenities that people can actually, I mean, see. And if if we have it translated to something that people can really relate to, and then some some effect of this is being pushed by by the these charges, then maybe. But for now. Uh, just like the, the government is just taxing, you, you also 
realize that we still have uh, people paying taxes in some other areas. So for us, this is like uh, double taxes or multiple ta taxes for, for the people. All right, but let's talk about um, this particular uh, sector for one bit and uh, look at um, how it is really doing. You represent um, Amban. Before now, we have talked about um, how Nigerians have actually embraced uh, uh, using POS terminals, you know, for payments, uh, for transactions, and of course, you know, for other things that, that they would have ordinarily gone to the banks for. And the reports say that um, uh, e-payment transactions uh, um, have risen by 85.52% in one year. But the issue right now for me will be standard. We have talked about this over time now. Has anything changed? Has it improved over time with um, the operators, or with agents, and of course those who provide these services? Well, if there's anything, I think this, the, the the space is being polarized the more. Uh, we are not listening to us. The, the, the situation is such that nowadays you even see Against supposed agents and hawking around the streets, which is not supposed to be, yeah, it's access to the peer seminars is not very regulated, and it's a source of concerns for us as an association. And we, we have not stopped engagement with the needed and the right stakeholders to ensure that the business space is sanitized and then. Because a lot of people who have been in this business for for uh, seven, eight years are really getting discouraged, demotivated with the way things have turned out. Um, I mean, I will tell you, even though figures are rising in terms of uh, uh, transactions, but uh, at the base level, things are not going to be the shit. And that's the truth. All right, uh, things are not going as they should. But uh, let's talk about um, some issues that have, um, you know, bedeviled uh, these um, services, right? That that's uh, mobile money operations in the country. The last time you were here, we talked about, um, you know, education of um, these uh, agents, uh, those people who have kiosks and those who operate, you know, from even sometimes shops and all of that, you know. How far have you gone, that's Amban, in educating these agents to... So they don't fall victims of um, fraudulent um, activities. Well, we, like I said, we are not resting. Uh, we, in all of our state chapters, um, even some of the state that have Zuma chapters, uh, in all of our engagements, we still try to ensure that we give our members the needed training required to play in the sector um, in terms of security, in terms of um, account reconciliation and being able to to know when they have profit margin or not. And like um, this ENTL that we're talking about, some of them don't even know the implication on their accounts. So we have to make them aware that the implication is, is out for them and how they need to also guide uh, against yeah, because for, for, for some agents who receive some transfer into the account, for example, uh, if you have uh, 10 people transfer 10,000 and above into your account daily, uh, it means you have, you have given the government 15 naira in 10 places. And if you are charging 100 naira for such transactions, it means your gross profit on each of those transactions is just 15 naira. And you also need to put in, into consideration the cost of paper, you know, the cost of data, the cost of the space you are using and the cost on capital. So all of these, we, are, we try to educate our members for, to, for them to be more aware and be more prepared in, in the challenges that we face in the business. Okay, but with all of this new, um, this new policy as it, as it is right now, because right now what obtains is that for an average transfer, if I, go, if I walk to a POS terminal, if I want to do a, uh, a transaction, uh, maybe a transfer of about um, 5,000 Naira, or maybe I want to do a withdrawal of about 5,000 Naira, you know, I get to be charged about um, 100 Naira. But with this new initiative, uh, would there be like an increase uh, in charges in maybe going forward? Definitely. It has to reflect for, for agents to stay afloat. Um, it is not a bazaar. 
is that your father pays one show. Um, everybody is in the business to make money. And when, when it gets to the point where the taxes, the stamp duties, and all that cost, uh, I wrote your, your profit margin. What it, has, what it means is that you need to also scale up and then make sure you have your margin uh, in the business. So definitely, uh, for agents who know what they are doing, they will definitely increase their, their, their charges across board. If they do increase their charges across board, like you have said now, what does it really portend? Because uh, most Nigerians patronize the POS service for convenience sake and, and um, the need uh, for wanting to just go to the bank and standing in the queue and all of that. They'd rather just go to a POS and um, get withdrawals done or get payments done. But if the services are going to be more expensive, wouldn't it look like uh, the federal government is trying to take business away from these people because the average Nigerian might just want to go to the bank for their transaction and not pay as much as maybe a 150 naira per transaction? Justin, beyond the business, is actually, again, if you look at the, uh, the financial inclusion policy, it, it runs against the, the policy. It's like I said, it's like a policy somersault. What we are trying to do is say everybody must be financially included. Uh, now we are making the access to such financial services uh, more expensive for people. Then it, it makes them run away. Um, they would rather their money under their pillow um, or wherever. Um, so, so I mean, for, for those who already have accounts, uh, it's more expensive for them to access their funds. And for those who do not have and who we are still trying to encourage to do, uh, it, it becomes a demotivating factor for them that when I put my 10,000 error there, I'm not getting my 10,000 error back after a day. So it's, it's like a policy of, sort, of some sort. Okay, let's talk about other issues in operations of, um, you know, agents and um, operators because uh, we have had over time of um, disruptions and um, taxes may be illegal by local government and local council administration. Can you tell us about them? Well, just like the federal government has, has done or they are still doing, uh, the same is for the state and some of the local government councils. They look at... Uh, sector I feel it's 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 some area they can just milk and um, get some fund uh, to to fund their activities and projects um i mean it and i believe it's because they really do not understand why the sector exists uh, the sector exists to cushion the effects uh, of having to travel miles from your home to the banks to have access to your fund or to get financial services so when they look at us, they look at the, once they hear we buy money, what first comes to their mind is money runs in this business so we can tap on it. Um, most of us run on loans to do our businesses. And then when you have this, you have the state government will give you um, a personal income tax uh, notice, the local government will give you um, uh, a trade permit. Then you have some other individual contractors that will also call you that they are, they are tolling. Uh, sometimes they even lump us up with uh, Lotto guys, say that they are, they are getting money from uh, betting Lotto and, and mobile money. So, so this, this, these issues we face, uh, of course, there are times we've had uh, to sit with some of them to engage them and make them understand why we exist and it is not a safe. Our money runs like that in, in our sector. I think we want to. All right, uh, um, Shago, let's talk more now concerning operations on Amban. You talked about um, a task force sometime uh, in November last year. How far has this task force gone in um, um, bringing sanity to operations um, in this? Um, mobile money um, agencies and all of that? Yeah, um, the, the major issue that we have regarding the tax force it has uh, kicked off uh, is, is that uh, in, for now in the business we have free entry. Uh, we are looking for a way where before you get into the business there will be some kind of checks and then some of them will have to go through the association. But for now, everybody seems not to need to 
come into this um, bracket for us to be able to uh, ensure that the re required regulations um, um, so the same regulation that we are talking about is applied. So uh, we are doing more of engagement with the government and uh, the security operatives, uh, making them to see the dangers in in where the market is for now. And then we are getting positive responses. And that's why we have not gone out full, fully as we should. Uh, we are trying to be so sure we have the we need good backing of the law because we are a law abiding association. So for now, uh, we are we are taking it a step at a time. All right. Uh, before we round off, I just want to find out um, how um, the relationship um, has been in recent times um, between Amban and um, other active players, and as well as um, the uh, the regulator, the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, for the past uh, six years, uh, we have had a very, very robust relationship with the Central Bank of Nigeria. Uh, as we speak, many of our state chapters uh, sit on the Committee for Financial Inclusion um, in, in the uh, respective states, and um, also with a whole lot of um, uh, licensed operators. We have good relationship with them. Uh, we, we make them understand how things run in our sector on the field. We give them feedback, and Central Bank has really told us that for us to achieve the sanity we, we crave in our sector, it is for us to self-regulate. And of course, they are ready to give us the backing uh, when our, uh, the time that we are ready. They are ready to give us the backing when we are ready. And then, uh, so the, the relationship with the regulators and the license operators for us, it's a good one. We are trying to build even on it. All right, Chair. Chair um, the last question now for you would be, in achieving this um, financial inclusion you know, that we have talked about in Nigeria, you know, what more do we need to see uh, in terms of uh, maybe policies on the part of government uh, to make sure that every Nigerian, you know, is banked, uh, maybe informally, as it were, you know, if you go to the hinterlands, everyone can actually enjoy these services. What more uh, needs to be put in place? Now, first and foremost, we have the regulations to set up this sector. So what we do not have is the implementation. So we need to do more on the implementation and adhere to it. All parties must come together and begin to work and play by the books. And then again, uh, for us, at the last rung of the ladder in the sector, we need more uh, financial support from the government. What has been happening over time is that these funds are released to the nicest operators who also, in turn, maybe invest in some other areas. But for us, at the last round, we actually provide these services as, 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 it, as, as they are. We need the fund to be able to do more. And again, we also want the government um, to help with the security of agents because as, as of now, agents have become soft targets for armed robbers. And then we are so open and you know, Nowadays, you see agents being kidnapped, being robbed, and made across the country. Yeah, yeah. So we need more security around us. For us to be able to do more, serve more. The hinterland, I mean, people are running away from, from such areas now with the, with the spirit of killing and kidnapping in the country today. So it is the demotivating factor for many people who, before now, believe they can do more going to the villages, the creeks, and hinterlands. So we need to do more, and the government has to come in this area to support the yeah. association, and indeed all agents in this sector. All right, many thanks, um, Shego, for the thought and the insight you have brought to this particular discourse. Shego Iligbede, he's uh, the public relations officer of Amban, and he has talked to us about the federal government's plan to you know, get more revenue from uh, electronic money transfers. We also looked at uh, sanitizing uh, you know, the financial inclusion policy of the federal government. Thank you so much, Shego. Thank you, Justin, for having me.
And that's the science of the show for this week. I am Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for watching. We'll return again next week. Bye for now.